got a very long question from Maddie and I'm going to just make a video because she wrote me a bunch of questions and uh, some I've already answered and some are very short so I don't mean to be uh, rude I just don't elaborate because I either have already answered it or there's really not much to say um, let me just get started she asked me what are the rates Wow, there are several rates and you can Google all of them. I mean, I can't even begin to answer that. I would, we would be here all day long. We would be here all day long. You, the, re, the rates are readily available. So I don't, I mean, <laughs> Google it. Could you, I mean, unless you want like more specific, like if you had a question about a specific rate, but I can't just sit here and name all the rates. There, there, there's a lot. I mean, and I know a lot of aviation ones, I mean, what good would it do me to sit here and say AT, ATI level, ATO level, AE, I level, O level, AME, AM, ABE, ABF, MA, like HM. I mean, I, I could do that CS, LS, all day long, but you can Google the rates because I, I don't know what else to say. Um, could you elaborate more on C-School? I... I I mean, from my personal experience, everyone's C school is a bit different. After my A school, and I can only go go by off what my rate is. If you're not aviation, or if you're completely separate, it could be a completely different ball game. So really, and I'm sorry, I'm having trouble answering these, but they're they're a little too vague, and I can't give like a well-rounded answer if I don't know exactly like what you want to know. Could you elaborate more on C school? Ah. I went to C school after A school. There is no B school. A lot of people think there's a B school. And C school for me was just more specific about my rate. Like in A school, I learned the basics of being an AT, O level. Then when I was in A school, I got my orders and my platform, which means like the aircraft or like what you'll be working on. Some people get helos and some people get whatever. I got C2s and it's a... Uh, Baby, it's a the COD carrier carrier onboard de delivery plane, precious cargo VIP. I've talked about this, but my C school was just a more specific school about that aircraft. So, in my future, if I stay in, if I if I get changed to a different platform, like if all of a sudden I go to Helos, I may or may not go to C school for Helos. It depends on what I know, what they want me to learn. I may have to go to another C school to learn more about Helos because I've never worked on those. I don't know, it just all depends. It's more specific, more specific. C school is more specific than A school, and you may or may not go to C school. Sometimes it's in your orders, sometimes it's not. Like in A school, you can get your orders cut without a C school in them. Mine included a C school, but I know people that didn't have a C school included in their A school orders. But now they're in their command, and the command is going to send them to C-School. Not anytime soon, because of budget cuts, they don't have the funds to teach us anything right now. But some, depending on how imperative it is for you to learn whatever, they may or may not send you to C-School at all. Then she asks, could you explain Liberty, Buddy, slash, Log in A-School, Phase 1 through 3? I made a video about that. And you asked more, so I'm assuming that you've seen that video, but I've explained everything, so I don't, maybe if you had a specific question you could ask, I could help you with that, but I already talked about going on Liberty and having a Liberty buddy and logging out with the Liberty buddy. Then, uh, sorry if I'm rude, I don't mean to be rude, I just, I don't know what you're asking. And this, and other people may have uh, the same kind of general questions. And so if you do have a more specific question about these general, very vague questions, maybe you could put them in the comments below and ask specific so I know what it is you want to know. But these are, I can't really answer these. Could you share more about your MEPS and DEPS experience? Um, I DEPT in. It was hard for me to get things going because I had braces and I needed to get my braces off and I needed to get my orthodontist to sign off saying that I would have them off at a certain date for me to even go to MEPS. So that process took a little bit. I think I started in November of 2011 and then in December 2011 is when I finally depped in and then I had to pick a rate that I liked. I got to pick from three rates and there was a bunch available and 
I picked one that would be available when I got my braces off because I wasn't getting my braces off until May. You can't go to boot camp with braces. So I, I picked AT because my dad works with electricity and I'm familiar with electricity and it just fit, you know? Then in the MEPS, um, MEPS, you take your ASVAB there, you get your physical there, you take a psychology test there, you pick your rate there, and um, I could be more specific, but I don't really know what they want me to talk about. You know what I mean? Like I can't lay it out exactly because I don't know if I can. You know what I mean? It's not like top secret or anything like that. I just don't, I just, I'm going to respect the boundaries of MEPS and DEPS and the whole processing. Like if you had more specific questions, write a more specific question and maybe I could answer that. But in a general sense, that was my MEPS and DEPS experience. Waking up early in the morning, tips and tricks. Get up. <laughs> I don't know what you want from me. A tip to wake up early? G get up. I don't know what do you, I, it sucks to get up. I have to get up early in the morning, every morning, and I hate it. But when my alarm goes off, I get up. I don't hit snooze at all. You stand up as soon as your alarm goes off. Don't think about it because then you'll just go back to bed. And if you go back to bed after you hit snooze and your snooze goes off in 10 minutes, you'll still be just as tired. You'll be just as tired. So just get out of bed. As soon as your alarm goes off, stand up. Is that a tip and trick? I don't really know how you wake up early. Everyone's different. Some people are really groggy. Some people could just get right out of bed like my brother. Some people it took some, it takes self-discipline, a lot of discipline for me to get out of bed because I would rather, I would love to sleep until 8. I would love to sleep until 9, you know? I can't. I just get out of bed. How do you treat slash cope with your water? How did you treat slash cope with your water poison, poisoning? How did I treat it? I didn't drink water anymore. Well, I did, okay, in a medical sense, I don't know that I was diagnosed with water poisoning, but there was a stint in boot camp where my electrolytes were really low, my platelets were really low, everything was really low, so they told me not to drink as much water. And they put me on LLD, which means limited light duty, which means I couldn't, like, IT really hard for the sake of, like, safety, I guess. I just didn't drink water. And, and then a day later, I was fine. Explain night school and different classes at a school. I explained night school. You go in the nighttime. Girl, Maddie, I love you. Maddie, I don't know who you are, but your questions I've answered. I don't know what to say. I feel so mean, but I don't understand. Explain night school and different classes at a school. I explained that when I first got to A school, I had to wait to get classed up, and my night classes started with a general electrician class, and that was during the nights, but when you class up to Strand, it's during the day, and I had to do the two weeks of, I even forget what it's called, my nose itches. I talked about all that. I don't know, I don't know what you're asking, because I, I, I talked about all that. Navy advancement and ranking up. Um, that's a good question. Your others are good questions too. I'm sure if I knew what you're asking, but I don't. If you could be more specific, I'm beating a dead horse with that. I feel so bad. Maybe I'm grouchy. Maybe I shouldn't even upload this. You guys are seeing a side of me that's kind of cheeky. I don't mean to be cheeky. I was cheeky all day today. I was pretty cheeky. My hair. Me and this perfect bun thing. I'm obsessed with having a perfect bun, but when when I'm at work, I have to wear a cranial this huge cranial with goggles and a piece that covers your forehead and a piece that covers your back and it squishes my bun and I take it on and off all day long. There's no way that I can have a good bun and it really drives me crazy because I hate sloppy looking buns. But when you work, you work. And for a girl, that cranial will mess up your hair. That's another reason why I cut because I had the side bangs but I would have to pin them and then, and then taking on and off the cranial. But with this, I can just put the cranial on and take the cranial off and it's no big deal. What did you ask? Navy advancement and ranking up. Um, I don't really know the specific time frames. Maybe it's a year each time. I don't really know. But there's like a, like if you take the test for fourth, fourth class, E4, third class petty officer, then you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can take the test for second class petty officer. The tests, as of right now, are held in every six months, March and September. So I just took the advancement exam in March and you don't get the results for about two months. And then if I didn't pass it, I can take the advancement again 
in September and take it again and again and again until I pass it, I guess. I don't know. But there is a thing where if you are not a certain rank by like so many years, then you are, is it called PTS? Out? You get out the Navy. Like, I think by 12 years, you need to be a first class. If you're not a first class and you've been in for 12 years, it's pretty rough. Like, that looks really rough. You need to be a certain rank in a certain amount of years. And there's also different things that contribute to the advancement exam. And it's, an, it's a test that you take to get to a petty officer third class, another test for second class, another test for first class. And I'm, I've never taken a test to be a chief. No, I don't think there is a chief. I just think that maybe you get recommended to go to a board and maybe you get interviewed and then you're put on a board. I don't really know how it works to make chief, but I don't think it's a test. Don't quote me on that. But um, your awards, you can get certain awards. I honestly don't know what the awards would be. Um, evals, you get evaluated on your performance. And um, they wrote my eval because I am an E3. And I, I don't think you write your first eval, but you start writing your evals in the future. And then you show it to, and it goes up the rank. And they check the eval to make sure it makes sense, your evaluation your volunteer hours, your work performance, any great thing you, that you've done. You have like an I love me folder and you make it into this eval. And the accumulated points from your eval, any awards. If I've taken the test and I was passed but not advanced, like this March if I passed the test but I didn't advance and a bunch of other people who scored better advanced, that would make points toward my getting advanced in September also. So there are little things that contribute to advancing. Um, in the military and you do take tests and also the whole thing I talked about when you get recommendation after a school some people can get the top of class no one sats I've talked about all that and get uh, advanced to do a board and get advanced to third class pay after that way so that was a good question um, study tips for a school uh, I made flashcards that's how I studied uh, I don't really study. How did you study for the ASVAB? I didn't study at all. I was almost 10 years out of high school and took it just out of nowhere. And I just took it. I've never been good at studying, so I'm not very good at answering those questions. What are the regulations slash setup for uniform bed? You can look up the Uniform Code of Military Justice, the UCMJ, this big fat blue book, and I've got it down in that drawer. Maybe I'll show you. This is balanced. Um, this is balanced. The Blue Jackets manual. What am I talking about? I don't even know what I'm talking about. Maybe I shouldn't ask any questions because I don't even know what I'm talking about. The UCMJ. The UCMJ is, with, it's all in, everything's in this book here. <laughs> this is the Bible for the Navy. And uh, you can look up, it's all online too. You can look up um, uniform regulations and... Everything about standing watches in here and uh, ranks and rates are in here. Navy history. Are uniform codes in here? They should be. I don't really know. I've always used the internet. Customs, courtesies, and ceremonies. Uniforms. There it is. Yeah, page 58. There's a whole... I, I should... Uh, I should Google that site. There's a really good site for uniform um, codes. These are the different uniforms, though. Uh, you asked when you wear the dress whites and dress blues, NSUs and WUs. And that's all in this here book. Your dress whites are summer only. And depending on your command, like obviously San Diego is warmer. It's going to be different than Norfolk. Um, your whites get implemented in a certain month that you start wearing them and then they cut off at a certain month you stop wearing them but your dress blues you can wear year-round typically in the winter because they're heavier but when in doubt like you can always wear your dress blues but the whites are summer only and then your NSUs these are your NSUs they're um it's kind of like a fancier working uniform I mean like me I wear my NWUs which is maybe working uniform uh, that took the place of the utilities just to get down and dirty in them even though I have we have coveralls also but you can only wear your coveralls in the work center and if you want to leave base to go to lunch during work you have to change out of your coveralls because you can't walk around in your coveralls but you can walk around in these these are like the set of them is like 180 or something really expensive I 
don't know because I got them issued in boot camp and the money was all subtracted that way but the the coveralls we get issued are like 30 bucks and so if you're in a if you're in a rate where you're going to get dirty a lot I would say to wear your coveralls because it's just easier you wear your coveralls in battle stations in boot camp otherwise you wear these um, just for everyday work to get down and dirty um, in school, that's what we wore these in when we went to class in A school and C school. You basically are in these all the freaking time. And then in A school, every Friday, we wore the NSUs, the, what are they called? Service uniform, Navy sur service uniform. Every Friday, because it was like dress up on Friday, get nice on Friday. So these Monday through Thursday, and then this on Friday. In school, in A school, in my A school anyway, it might not be... But like if you're standing certain watches, like a quarter deck watch or something, you may have to wear your whites or you may, like our quarter deck watch, if you're E5 and above, E4 and above, I don't know, every command is different. They have to wear these if they're on quarter deck watch. Command will let you know, really. I, I, don't, I don't know that I will wear these for a very, very long time, but I did wear them all the time in A school because I worked behind the desk with the Yeomans. And um, here it just talk, talks about... Um, uniforms for petty officers and this and that and your covers and but this is all on the internet you can look all that up the codes ranks and rates it tells you about uh, all all kinds of different rates it's a pretty handy book anyway that's that's the general gist of that uh when do you wear each uniform okay identify rankings and leaders rtcs petty officers chiefs etc okay okay um R rtc is recruit recruit training command rdcs are recruit division commanders so they are your rdcs and you are at rtc that was confusing for me when I first got there. And your RDCs will be petty officers or chiefs. Um, usually, it's a chief and a petty officer that leads the division. Some people have, like, three petty officers. We had a chief and two petty officers. So, um, in order to be an RDC, I believe you have to be an E5. Don't quote me on that. So, I think that you're at least going to have a second class or above to be your RDC, but I'm, I've never seen a third class as an RDC. I don't think that you can do that. Um, anyhow, identifying the rankings and leaders. Okay, so the they'll they'll break it down for you when you first get off the plane when you're in the airport to get on the bus to go. They'll let you know anyone in black pants. I should I should find that again. Let me show you. Just for the gist, because I was a complete civilian. Like, I had no idea what anyone looked like, what the uniforms were like. I didn't know any of that. So they um, let you know because they know that. Anyone that was, and your RDCs are going to wear their NSUs. Your RDCs are going to have a red rope around their shoulder, and the, the RDCs in training will have a blue rope. Anyway, these, okay, basic, basically, if they have a khaki top and a black bottom, you call them petty officer. You don't say, good morning, first class petty officer. Good morning. You just say petty officer. These, if they're wearing black pants, they're a petty officer. If they're wearing khaki, I'm going to say you call them chief, but they also could be an officer. But you won't see officers um, at the airport, you know, or like when you first, these are the chiefs, all khaki. But officers also wear all khaki, but they have different color devices, and you have to salute them if you're outside with cover on, blah, 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 blah. But basically, if they're in charge of you and they are your RDC, if they're in all khaki, call them chief. If they have black bottoms, call them petty officer. Basically, that's how that goes. And then pay more attention when you're outside walking around by yourself so you don't accidentally call um, a sir or a ma'am a chief. Because I did that a lot. I still do. Um, she said, I know this is a lot of questions, da, da, da. a huge motivation, okay, such and such. You're sweet. You're sweet. Okay, so now I feel really bad that I couldn't answer really your, your questions up top there because I didn't really know. This is 20 minutes long. Holy smokes. I didn't really know on what you're asking. If you have, if anyone has, um, Maddie, you made a very good general point about 
different uh, subjects. So if anyone had any questions about each subject that Maddie mentioned, or more questions about the specifics of what I answered or didn't answer, then you can leave a comment. I would say leave a message, but I just checked my messages and I haven't checked them in like a month. And that's the first time I checked them was just now. So if you really want me to answer something, honestly, find me on Facebook because I'll get on there more often than I will on YouTube. But um, I'll see a comment before I'll see a YouTube message, okay? So I'm sorry, Maddie, if I didn't answer your questions and I'm sorry if I was rude or short, didn't mean be. I didn't mean to uh, discredit the uh, uh, seriousness or, or discount any of your questions or to refer to them as vague, but uh, I just had a hard time answering. I made, a, I made a video before about how I'm obsessive about trying to answer them as accurately as possible. So when I get a pretty general question, I, I freak out a little bit. So that's what that was in the beginning of the video, was me freaking out. Because I couldn't answer them specifically. It's my own hang up. It's weird. Okay, I'm going to work out. I'm going to go work out. And uh, I'm tired. But you just got to keep pushing. That's what you asked. Um, waking up early and tips for getting up. I've always been bad with that, Maddie. I've always been bad with that. And I'm bad with that right now with discipline. And that is, I can honestly say there's a lot of reasons I joined the military, but one of the things that I was most looking forward to was to learn self-discipline. And I can honestly say that the military didn't necessarily teach me how to do that, but it forces you to have to have that. And if you don't, you're going to fail. So it, it doesn't necessarily make it easier. You, you just start to realize you just need to do it or else kind of a thing. Like um, one influence in my life that has given me self-discipline more than the military is meeting Giovanni and uh, I met him in a school and he he is I can't even begin to explain how self-disciplined he is like he wants to relax just like anybody else but he goes and goes and goes and I see that and I maybe I feel guilty about my laziness maybe it inspires me to be more disciplined I don't know what it is but I have become more self-disciplined and I think it is an in a, uh, as a result of being in the military, but there are very, uh, there are people in the military, even still, that are not disciplined at all. People that come in late, but your ass will get reamed if you come in late. So when your alarm goes off in the morning, you get up. It's not even a question because uh, if not teaching you self-discipline, it's just a fear. It's just like knowing what's going to happen to you if you're late to work is all the reason you need to get up as soon as your alarm goes off without hitting snooze, you get the fuck up. You don't mess around, you just get up. Cause you know the consequences are higher than, in the civilian world you can be like, ah, traffic, meh, but in the military, you, ha you need to be there. And they teach you that if you're there on time, you're late. 15 minutes early is on time. If they tell you to be there at eight, you're there at 7.45 at least. I'm always there half an hour earlier, try, but anyway, this is a long video. I'm going to go. I'm flushed. I haven't been feeling well. Maybe I won't work out. I've been pushing myself. Maybe I will. I don't know. I don't know what I need. A nap? I'll talk to you guys later. This is 23 minutes long. I'm so sorry. Okay? And Maddie, if you have any more questions, and uh, we can figure this out. The questions that I didn't answer for you because I just wasn't a very good question answerer, you hit me back with some specifics and I'll try to help you out, girl. I'll help you as much as I can. Okay? Talk to you later. Bye -bye.